This pano is gonna be insane. Welcome to Kansas, or maybe not. You'd be forgiven for thinking that I was in Kansas or somewhere in the United States with the barn we got behind us there, this old looking barn, but the truth of the matter is we're here in Australia and this barn was built as a, as a prop, as a set piece in the Superman movies, which is awesome. So I'm stoked to be out here imaging this barn tonight. If you're new to the channel, welcome guys. If you're not new, welcome back. So. I was here recently, a couple of weeks ago, and I grabbed a panorama over this barn here with a 40 millimeter lens. So, you know, I was stoked to get that image and have the opportunity to get that image too. But I accidentally left my tripod out here. So I had to come back. And this is a, this is a couple of hours away from my place. So I've made the track back here to pick, pick my tripod up and I thought, why not? Why not shoot it again? But I'm always saying to you guys, don't be afraid to fail you know, shoot for the stars, all those sort of things. So I'm just gonna go crazy tonight. I've already got the panorama at 40 millimeters. So tonight I'm just gonna go, you know, no holds barred, 85 millimeter, full panorama, horizon to horizon, the full arch. So it's gonna be absolutely insane. It's gonna be hundreds of images. Who knows how big the file sizes are gonna be and who knows how many times my computer's gonna crash trying to process this data, but it should be a good one. Stick around. So that's the four grand all done. And oh my gosh, that took forever. I forgot just how long it takes to shoot massive panoramas with an 85 mil lens. It just takes so many images. Um, as you're seeing in that time lapse, there's a bit of artificial light getting thrown on this foreground. And just in the paddock next to where I am, the guys are over there harvesting cotton at the moment. So they've got all their harvesting tractors and what what not going so every time they come towards us they're actually throwing light onto the foreground so um, you know a bit of free light painting why not um, now to plan this foreground out I just used all the tips that I gave you guys in my planning video about jumping into planet app figuring out how many images I need and jumping into Stellarium and just finding where the center of the arch is going to be when the image is going to be finished so I got a bearing on that and just simply put the barn at that bearing in relation to my tripod. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below so you can go and check it out. But what I figured out was the sky's gonna take seven rows high to get done, which is just bonkers. And it's gonna be about 25 images wide. So to keep the image somewhat in proportion when it's finally stitched together, I've decided to shoot three rows for the foreground. So you know, 25 images wide, three rows, 
and as you can see that's a lot of time invested just for the foreground so it's going to be a long long night and another one of my videos which you guys might have seen about focal lengths and you know the compromises we make you can start to see now what that means for me tonight so i'm going to make heaps of compromises and one of those compromises is it's going to take forever to shoot but anyway i'm going to check kick back and chill out for a bit and um, wait to shoot this guy. So it's almost time to get stuck into the sky. Now I've made my way back from the barn, probably about 100 yards or so, you can see it there in the background. And the reason for that is because I'm shooting at 85 mil, there's going to be so many rows and there's actually going to be a couple of rows behind where the barn actually breaches the horizon line. Now, because it's going to take so long between each rows, the sky is going to move a fair bit. And when it all stitches back together, the barn's actually going to have some weird, um, some sort of weird steps in it. Now, if I left my camera in the exact same position, I'd have to do an incredible amount of warping and twisting in post-production to get the foreground to cover all that sort of steps and whatnot. So I've simply moved back in the same line, same bearing, all that sort of stuff, just to make the barn itself slightly smaller in the sky portion of the panorama than what it is in the foreground. So that when I lay my foreground over the top, it actually covers all those steps that will be in the barn. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Now, I'm gonna to have to jump in and do a few test shots and sort of figure out how I'm gonna get you know, all these images done. It's probably gonna be around 170 or 180 images to get the sky portion done. So um, I'll have to jump in and figure out some settings and um, see how I can make it all work out. Woo! This pano is gonna be insane. It's just, it's been that long since I've shot with 85 mil. I just forget how zoomed in it is. So this, the resolution on this is just gonna be absolutely incredible. So I've just ripped off a couple of test shots there to try and manage, figure out how I'm gonna to manage tonight. And I've come up with F2.8, um, one minute exposures. So I've given myself about three hours to get this done. So I'm gonna need about, I think 180-ish images. So that should get it all done, one minute exposures. And I'm gonna shoot it ISO 640 now. It's gonna be underexposed in the camera, but my Sony A7R2 is um, ISO invariant. So I'm just gonna protect the highlights um, by shooting at a lower ISO and having a bigger dynamic range. So I'll just boost everything in post-production and it'll make no difference um, to whether I shoot high ISO here or boost it in post-production. Now, I'm gonna be shooting on the Samyang 85mm f1.4, so I've stopped it down a bit just to sharpen it up. Sony a7R2, my go-to camera, it's hydrogen alpha modified, and tracking tonight will be on the Star Adventure mount, so let's get stuck into it. That reminds me why I don't shoot full arch panoramas at 85 mil very often. I mean, man, that took forever. I don't know how many total images I shot. I don't even know how many rows I shot, to be honest with you. It just, it just seemed like they kept coming and coming and coming. Um, I'll put all the, the details of the image, total images, resolution, all that sort of stuff um, up on screen, but Man, thank God that's done. I won't be doing another panorama like this for a while. And surely this has got to be up there with, you know, the biggest nightscape, the highest resolution nightscape and total images for a panorama out there. I mean, who else is this crazy to do stuff like this? Nobody's stupid enough, um, but it's done. It's in the bag. I'm stoked. The sky looked awesome. 
and thanks heaps for joining me again out here under the stars i love being out here and sharing what i love with you guys um, i hope it's given you a bit of inspiration but that's it it's in the bag i'm tired i'm gonna go and get into bed i hope you enjoy the image and until next time cheers guys